Hey everyone, it's Nick and Walker at Full Spectrum Laser and welcome to Laser Talk Live. Now, what are we talking about today? Well, I it's forgot. Wednesday and we're here at, what is it? <laughs> oh, we're memories. We're talking <laughs> about memories here at Full Spectrum Laser. So uh, we're really talking about all things that uh, you can keep in memorial using your laser. So whether you're scrapbooking, uh, you know, remembering your favorite photo or just making a cool picture frame uh, for a family member, all the different ways that you can, uh, you know, hold your memories. Now, I actually called your mom and have her send yeah. in a photo of you as a kid. Um, Charles, you want to bring that up real quick? It's a pretty good one. <clears throat> this is a picture of you and Ollie there looking go. pretty cool. Look, Look at, at that. that. Look, Look at, at those that there. dashing Look at. young man. So that, that's you in the top hat right there? Yeah, and then my little brother who's bigger than me now, so it's a little different, but still that's, adorable. That's hilarious. So and I, were you a kid? What? Oh, what? What? You did what? I actually went to your mom's house and we got a couple of pictures. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, geez. Ugh. Is that when I was, that, I was a child therapist there. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you look yeah. like How it. does that make you feel? Oh, geez. Uh, I was hungry. I was a hungry kid. Why, why did she give you all these? Yeah, that's not cool. Uh, what are you that, doing? That was my cousin's baby. I don't know. That, I, I'm like, we, so how you about Scott? Scott sent in so Scott <laughs> sent in a picture, right? Yeah, yeah um, right. That's a good one. That's a good one, right? Oh, yeah, there he goes. Look at these cute kids. Two. Oh, he got all those ugly ones of me with a yeah. giant baby head. Well, that's by uh, default. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, these two handsome young men. This is about a ten-year-old photo, maybe a little bit more. But uh, look at these handsome little guys. Now, the youngest one here is actually off to college this week, right, Ooh. Scott? Yeah, so Scott's the, yeah, UNR, so congratulations on that. Now, we actually, if you want to check in at the Muse, we actually threw on that photo um, just before the show started. Uh, sorry we were a little delayed getting on today. Uh, we just had a little bit of technical difficulties, but um, looks like yeah, we... Still having technical Still having slight technical difficulties. I might need to get a plug there at the... Uh, I'll just nope. talk to the camera. Uh, we'll just... Uh, in one second, we'll have that. Uh, but in the Muse, we have actually that photo starting to be engraved on. There it is, there right there. Uh, so we actually had that started yeah. um, over in the Muse. So we'll check back in in a little bit uh, after that's been engraved a little bit more and see how that's going. But uh, really, with the scrapbooking, is one of the biggest things that uh, people. It's huge amongst like women, especially, right? Absolutely. So, um, what, what would you say scrapbooking is? What's, oh man! Like, how would you just find this? If I don't, if I'm an alien, I show up to Earth. I'm like, what are you Earth? What is what is all this? What yeah, is they'd scrapbooking? They'd probably be like, wow. Um, no, they, they take memories, like photos and stuff, and like, say you go to Mount Rushmore, <laughs> and you make a scrap page of those pictures, maybe a couple of pictures, and like you have a cutout of Mount Rushmore, and just all kinds of like, you know, maybe a stamp from there. All that kind of. It's like a scrapbook, literally. Like it's literally you, like a scrapbook. Yeah, That's why I call it scrapbook. Tickets in there. You know, train ride tickets, all that kind of stuff. So. So now, with the laser, what's cool about keeping all those memories, like you said, like tickets or concerts, uh, train tickets, uh, plane tickets, uh, you know, um, different. Sometimes, if you're really nice at the, uh, when you're getting your passport stamped, you can pull out an extra piece of paper and they'll stamp it for you there and you get an extra stamp of where you've gone so you can put it in your scrapbook. All those little things, what you can do to accent them is laser cut little things to go in with the scrapbook with it, right? Definitely. Uh, we pulled up actually a bunch of photos of different things you can put in your uh, scrapbooking. Uh, so like, for example, if you're going on a family vacation across the country, Walker's actually included um, on our free files all of these state uh, shapes, right? Yeah, it's exactly like that. Each state is broken up into the, uh, the map. So you can actually cut all of them out and then spread them and put them in your scrapbook if you wanted to. And the great thing about these, there are vector files so you can scale them down to any size you like or whatever works for your scrapbook. Yeah, you can take the biggest state, meaning Texas, and then scale that to the full size of your muse and then do as big as you want, you know, from that scale. Absolutely. So Walker's saying, it, let's say you wanted to do a wall display with all the 50 states, uh, what you could do is take the largest state, Texas, and maximize that to your bed size. Mm -hmm. And every other state you would make after that to that scale would fit with Texas and you would, I mean, that would be a pretty big wall display, wouldn't it? Yeah, thanks for Pro clearing that up for me. Yeah, of course, yeah. Was that not, no, was no, it super no, clear no, what no, you said? No, it wasn't. It seemed confusing when I heard it. No, my no. brain's a million places. All right, so just like this, uh, you can do, um, obviously, the covers uh, and everything else with the scrapbook yeah. as well. That's probably the easiest way to um, use a laser for scrapbooking. But there's yeah. a bunch of little details as well you can get into. Yeah, we got all these uh, little cuts that you can add. Right, so like this one, like uh, you've made little things like this before to accent things. Like this just says, hello and love wow. you and memories. And wow. 
uh, lots of things like that. But those are key, neat little additions, especially for uh, memories of kids. Um, we can put like, yeah, uh, like uh, big head necklace and stuff like that. You grow into your body, <laughs> Walker, okay? I was, I'm a normal sized human now. Okay, but even like this, cutting out a, a custom frame, uh, this is done on a cardstock, so you can put a couple photos in from the zoo. Uh, what a great way to layer a couple of different uh, stacks of cardstock together to go with a photo. And I mean, you got two pictures of your kids to go in the uh, zoo frame. What a great way to lead into your Definitely. scrapbook. Your kids yeah. should be in the zoo. <laughs> I, do, I don't even have any kids. Like, what are all these? Did you watch some stand up comedy last night? You think no, you, no. you got some jokes now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these ones are great. I love uh, these different uh, photographs. You can put these next to each photo uh, in your book. Um, you can take some of the vintage photos and add them to older photos you have from you know different times in your life. Oh, yeah. uh, everyone has that box of photos at their mom's house that just needs to be dug through and sorted through. Uh, what a great way to you know find places for them is put them in scrapbooks and uh, have little accents like this you can put next to them. Oh yeah, super vintage hipster look. And so then. Um, I mean, to kind of expand on the memories, you could, and this is a file that you've done before, like you can take a uh, bottle of wine and create a box for it and personalize it for people to commemorate events and uh, different uh, things in life. We actually have one for a bottle of, uh, of uh, I think it's whiskey here, or vodka maybe, uh, with a couple of shot glasses. There we go. Very cool. Again, this yeah, is a gr you could You could do the bottle as well if you wanted to, like a special engraving on the rotary and then this special box that holds it. Absolutely. Now, one thing to remember when you're engraving uh, bottles with alcohol in it is your um, client has to buy the bottles first and then you can engrave on them. You can't pre-buy bottles of alcohol, engrave them, and then resell the alcohol. So keep mm -hmm. that in mind and uh, never break any alcohol sales laws, especially in states like Virginia and Tennessee. Uh, they take that stuff real seriously. So make sure your client buys the bottles of wine and then you engrave them for them. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, and then we have another great one here, uh, just the family tree. This one's real simple, but yeah. I mean, everyone can utilize a family tree. And you can, you can make those photos as well, which would be really cool. Absolutely, and that'd be pretty cool to photo engrave each family member in their little, uh, in their little heart there. Yeah, and I, I think that's all the examples we have, right, Charles? Yeah. yeah um, so it looks like we have some people checking in on Facebook. Uh, looks like we have uh, Melody. Uh, how's it going, Melody? Hello. Jim Robinson, hello from Memphis. How's it going, okay. Jim? And then uh, Don, uh, hola, how you doing, Don? Hola, uh, thanks for checking in. Um, looks where's, like where's Dave and Lynn? Dave and Lynn, I think Dave and Lynn are probably busy with the pool tournament, right? They still got the world's biggest Wait, pool tournament. Jeff and Lynn. Jeff and Lynn. Jeff and Lynn. Yeah. Jeff and Lynn, yeah. Scott, come on, Scott. man. He our just knows Lynn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so even like um, like we just sampled, uh, Walker actually has done this file before, which is a photo frame, which you can you know slide your photo right yeah, in. You did that on one hour build, right? Oh, well, that's right. Yeah, you were gone that week. I yeah. actually did do this on one hour build, and you can actually personalize this at the top to say anything from like number one dad, or even something inspirational like mm -hmm. believe or inspire. Number two dad. Number uh, number two dad. <laughs> hmm, I don't know about that. That could go many ways. <laughs> then um, this is an example that we did um, of a, a wedding photo. Now, if you can imagine, if you're a wedding photographer and you wanted to upsell, um, or if you wanted to provide a service to wedding photographers, no matter where you are in the country, if you own a laser, there are wedding photographers and videographers in your area. Offer your services to put their photos on pieces of granite, rock, stone, wood, whatever. I uh, mean, that's five dollars and you have the best looking like clean output on there. Absolutely. So if you want to pick that up again, uh, Walker makes a great point. Um, this is what you'd consider for flooring, a very expensive piece of flooring. This is five dollars a square foot. But that just means that this slate is five dollars. So as far as overhead for something that is a very heavy, nice piece, five dollars is nothing. Uh, these can sell for 50, 60. I've seen engraved pieces of granite like this go for over a hundred dollars actually. So the return on investment on this uh, for an engraving that only takes about 30 minutes to engrave is pretty high. Yeah, yeah, you can get those and even do centerpieces for tables, all kinds of different Oh, absolutely. You can imagine even uh, th providing that service to um, wedding planners. So uh, people that are planning their weddings can have, you know, the bride and groom's name engraved on slate. Uh, also using those as memorials, uh, not only for, you know, uh, pets and loved ones, but different things that have happened in locations. Uh, we actually set one of those pieces of granite rock uh, last weekend up mm -hmm. on uh, the top of Where Cathedral can Rock. See that? Uh, yeah, so if you're in the Las Vegas area, you can actually go up to Mount Charleston, and right across from the Mount Charleston Lodge, there is, oh, sorry, the Mount Charleston Inn, there is a uh, place called Cathedral Rock, and there's a few trailheads there, but if you hike up to the top of Cathedral Rock, it's about a mile up, uh, you can see the plate that we uh, placed there last week, actually. Yeah, 
I actually made one for my past dog. As past. Well. Oh, so that's a sad memory. That is a sad memory, but um, a lot of people. I mean, if you're going to have pets, uh, you're going to have to deal with um, that eventually. So yeah. why not give them the you know the best memorial that uh, that you can? Um, now on to happier things. If Please. We could, yeah, just uh, turn the turn the curve just a little bit. <coughs> um, actually, one uh, one of the muse owners that we know, uh, Sanfra uh, Benson, she does a ton of scrapbooking mm -hmm. with this. She actually sells packets of things to help scrapbook with it, right? Yeah, she sells whole packets of like. Um, just themes and genres. So she'll have motorcycle stuff, you know, for and these people buy them and then just make their own scrapbooks. And these are people that are also making them themselves. It's a really tight knit community where they're, you know, they're making, they're buying, they're trading, and they're just doing all these kinds of things, which is really cool. But there's so many themes you can go with. It's crazy. Absolutely, and I think the best part is if you are a uh, laser owner, um, really anyone can create these little packets of uh, things. Now it doesn't matter if you're just making scrapbook packets, but if you can imagine any type of um, specialty maker that you can make a handful of uh, state shapes. Uh, if you're at the county fair cutting out hundred, or sorry, the state fair cutting out hundreds of your uh, state's shape out, and then be able to use them for different handouts, different companies as engravings for. Uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, business cards, uh, samples at the show, or what have you. Like, there's a tons of things you can offer with the uh, the laser for different people trying to keep memory sticks at different events and locations as well. Yeah, I think uh, Jenna on Facebook says weddings can be big bucks. That's her target market. Absolutely, She's Jeanette very does that. Uh, very, very smart. Um, if you ever watch Shark Tank, uh, Mr. Wonderful uh, is in the wedding business a few different ways, and that guy doesn't love anything more than money. So there's uh, there's anything to be said about that. And I actually worked uh, for a guy once who used to work with pools, and I asked him like, why do you, why do you work with pools? He's like, people with pools have money, Nick. It's like they always pay their bills on time, and that's a smart thing to think about because people doing weddings they're not so reasonable with their money. They're always thinking, how can I make this one day be as magical as possible? And if you can provide a service like this that really does make their day stand out from others, it's a lot of money in it for you. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, if you think about just uh, each wedding photographer and every wedding they do, they have to turn in their their photographs, you know, somehow. They need a USB stick to give to their bride and groom. Like, no one's turning in DVDs anymore or CDs oh. with photos on them. So getting a nice engraved box uh, with the bride and groom name engraved on it and the USB uh, with the date and the wedding location on it, I mean, those go a long way. It's very modern. Very, very modern, absolutely. Here's a USB stick full of your memories. Looks like we have uh, John Desnell is finally here. John, thanks so much for checking in. Uh, looks like uh, looks like that's it. Uh, Melody checking in still. Don, Jeanette, uh, that's all we got right now. Now, the next section we have is uh, talking about old family photos and kind of repurposing, but let's check in with the, uh, the muse real quick and see where we are with this photo. Yeah. Now, this one did. Power settings a little high? Uh, maybe the power settings are a touch high, but Really, it all depends on the photo. We would have maybe liked to play with this one just a little bit more. And we'll probably run this one again, but yeah, we probably just overpowered this one just a touch for the type of photo it had. So that's just all power settings, right? Um, in this case with the granite, as you can see down on um, the boy's face here, it's, it's losing a little detail, mostly because it's overpowered. So at, what were our power settings there, 71? So we or were 90. We, we probably should have backed it down to the mid 70s there. Yeah, but that's uh, you know that's a lot of the uh, learning with the uh, the thing because really the last photo we did uh, we did at those settings and it was pretty good but it also had a lot less data. So this photo had a ton of data especially in those shirts. Um, it's actually kind of surprising how much data is being picked up in the back of the uh, yeah. photograph there as well. From uh, 2007. I'm saying it's a very old photograph. So. Those old photographs, like you saw the few of me with an enormous head or Walker with his yeah, weird I don't know how you fit magician. that head in the picture. Did you notice your magician's hat? I mean, come on, man. Like, Dude, take it easy on my big hat, head. Bro, that's classic. You were, very, you were a gentleman since a young man. Yes. Very much so. Um, but as you can see, like, um, old photos, uh, they engrave really great. Uh, so you can take a scan of them. Uh, sometimes you can even take a photo of the, uh, the old photograph and send that right into uh, the muse. So, um, the other thing we kind of want to talk about is not only taking uh, photos engraving, but like taking um, commemorative plaques, family crests, and other different things that you can uh, use to enhance um, times you're making memories. So let's say you're having a baby shower, a birthday, a quinceanera, a uh, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, uh, any coming of age type uh, event. 
uh, being able to offer personalized uh, signage, uh, wedding or cake toppers, uh, what do you call them in the center of the uh, tables, the um, centerpieces? Yes, yeah, centerpiece. Different things like that for events really do make a big difference uh, for people. And uh, especially if you can do it for a friend, that's a big, uh, big add. And as far as offering as a service, that's, uh, there's a lot of money to be had in quinceaneras and other, I, oh. I'm saying that terrible. Quinceanera. Uh, quinceanera, yeah. sorry. Uh, and other such uh, coming of age mm. uh, birthdays. A lot of people invest a lot of money in those type of events. So um, always look for opportunities like that to, you know, uh, make a little bit of money with your laser. I mean, special times mean special, uh, what was I gonna say, what are you saying? <coughs> I'll look from Facebook. Yeah, we got some questions coming in. All right. Oh, you got a uh, question with Scott here for a moment? Yeah, we got Lori from Facebook ask, uh, what materials work best for photo engravings? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, it really depends on the type of photo, but uh, I like wood. Wood's a good one. If you have applied, then it hits that specific layer where the glue is actually a little darker. I like that. Um, I really like engraving leather as well. For a photo engraving? You can do a sweet photo engraving on leather. Really? Yeah. Uh, we'd like, like, we should do uh, that for one of our In The Cuts. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have an application photo of leather uh, photo engraving. Um, I like a solid wood. You um, like solid? Yeah, and something that's soft. So I don't like engraving on a hardwood. I like having a lot of effect on the wood. So. Uh, you like it real deep too, right? Um, well, for photo engraving, it's a little bit different. Um, it the depth doesn't really matter because you're not trying to make a real deep engraving with your photo. You're trying mm -hmm. to just have a good uh, bit of contrast. Uh, as you can see with the job we just did in the Muse, uh, a little too much power, even on a piece of granite, you just you kind of lose the details of the photo. We actually uh, ran off a photo earlier today that we kind of ran into the same problem where we probably just overpowered the settings a little bit too much. And then um, in every case, like the photo really defines how well it's going to come out. So uh, going in and doctoring the photo up a little bit just so we have a little bit cleaner edges, um, that can help a little bit too. Um, obviously, we didn't do that here. But really, um, the way it looks in the software, we could have got a much better uh, output on that, uh, on that granite. We'll have to try that again uh, here soon. We might do an invert as well. You want to see how yeah. that turns out? Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what we will do. We'll, um, we'll play with this a little bit, and then we'll post uh, our findings uh, here our on final Facebook. Final outputs with the power settings? Absolutely. So I got a question from Jeremy in Utah from the blogs. He asked, what is the best, best way to design breakaway tabs so that parts of the material can be punched out by hand after the job is done? It's a great question. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, like for uh, like an airplane model or something like that, you want it to stay on the piece but be able to pu be punched out. I would just do a simple cut tool in that actual vector line. So the vector line is just broken. But what's awesome is it can just be broken very small, the size of a stroke width, because yeah. that wood's going to hold really hard. Absolutely. So if you can imagine, if this was the uh, shape you were cutting out, you'd want to just uh, basically put a cut in the line. Yeah. So it'd be four corners, really, and then broken up to a very small point. And it's still going to hold, but it's going to break nice and easy out of there. Now, the thing you have to remember, though, as you're breaking apart those vector lines in your design, uh, you're now creating multiple objects with that single object. So just keep that in mind. And um, maybe with your outer lines when you design, keep that as its own separate object, and then group the inner lines uh, together. Yeah, yeah. And I would like to note that that's best implied. That's one application that's really good implied because if you do a solid wood and you want to do some breaking, it's going to actually break along the seams. Absolutely. And those grains and uh, what am I? Yeah, the grains. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to snap right there. So that's what's good about ply is they actually take those different pieces and move the grains as they glue them together. So it has strength on many different ways. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, looks like we have one more question coming in from Facebook. Yeah, Alex in Spokane, he says he watched the show last week and he really liked, it, really liked it, and he wants to know what is the best way to clean his uh, fume extractor filters? Okay, so fume extractor filters can be cleaned a few different ways. Uh, your particulate filter, you can just take your shop vac out and give a good vacuum to. Uh, that's the best way. You can always take it outside, give it a good uh, shake and bang. Uh, we've been known to use a broom handle uh, to knock out some of the particulate. Um, that's the big one. Uh, a fist can work. A uh, little painful unless you've got a big brooding fist like uh, Mr. Walker here. The um, other filters, though, really can't be cleaned too well, like the charcoal. There's no real cleaning of the charcoal. Yeah. And then the HEPA filter, you can't clean it. Those ha just have to be replaced. So um, keep your pre-filter uh, clean, and uh, usually that helps a lot. Uh, you'll notice on your uh, medium and large uh, fume extractors, they come with some uh, extra pre-filters. Uh, keep those clean and swapped out. Um, those can be washed a few different ways. I've actually taken one with a pressure washer before. You can probably use just a plain old hose uh, with your thumb over it, though, and wash a bit out. Just make sure those are completely dry, though, before you reintroduce them into your uh, fume extractor. Hit yeah, it. hit it on the head. Yeah, yeah. good. Uh, anything else from uh, coming over from that side? Oh, we got 
Sandra. Uh, when should I change the water in my water cooler? So Sandra. Um, Hello, Sandra. How are you doing? Thanks so much for tuning in first. And secondly, uh, to address your question, really simple. Uh, if you have a closed system like a, uh, a CW. She, she has a, uh, what is it, a water chilling? Uh, no, what is that? The uh, cool box. Sandra has a cool box. So with yeah. your cool box, you have a closed system. Um, really, you only need to switch out this uh, this water about every six months. Uh, you want to make sure you're using distilled water. A lot of people kind of skip over this or think it's not as important, or they add spring water or tap water. Uh, if you've done anything but distilled water, you should probably change your water right now, no. <laughs> like today, and then put distilled water in it. Now, the biggest reason is uh, inside of any other water besides distilled, you get um, uh, bacteria and other microbes that are in there, and eventually you're going to get some algae buildup. Uh, you'll see that buildup in your tube, in the uh, tubing uh, coming from your uh, cooler to the, um, to the tube. Uh, you don't want any of that. So. No. Uh, to avoid that, uh, very much use the distilled water. And uh, if you haven't used distilled water, I would say clean it out today. If you have an open bucket system for whatever reason, uh, we suggest you keep that cleaned out monthly. Yeah, and to clean it out, you can just turn it upside down. There's very little water in that thing. So turn it upside down, put some new water in. It looks like uh, Don's asking, uh, do you recommend any specific optical wipes for the mirrors and lens? Zeiss. Yeah, those are the best ones. You can get them on uh, Amazon for, I think it's like 12 bucks for a pack of 100 or 50 or something like that. Uh, they're really inexpensive, but if you go up to your local uh, CVS, Walgreens, uh, Rite Aid, uh, Duane Reed, uh, wherever you are in the parts of the world, uh, they have lens wipe kits for your le uh, camera, or sorry, for your cameras and uh, glasses that are like 99 cents a piece, and I think you get like 10 in there. Uh, those will work fine too. Uh, you basically just don't want to use anything coarse like your t-shirt or... No cotton. No cotton. No cotton. Anything like microfiber, anything, just no cotton. Looks like uh, Tapia Adrian's asking about updating her Muse to RE3. Now, if you have, um, if you've not updated your Muse to RE3, uh, or if you don't have the current update, all you have to do is be connected to the uh, the internet. Now, yes. if you don't have a strong internet connection, you might want to hardwire in, or if you have a uh, somewhat busy Wi-Fi network, because the one large update that switches you from RE2 being dominant to RE3 being dominant uh, is uh, quite a big download. So you might need to um, plug in directly to your uh, internet port. But it should automatically do so. Absolutely. If it hasn't automatically updated, simply send an email to support at fslaser.com and let them know you haven't got an update. They'll check your uh, system and MAC address. Uh, if you could, in that email, include your MAC address uh, and then uh, the email you used when purchasing your, uh, your machine, they can get that checked away for you right away and will most likely respond uh, with your update status. So Yeah, if you're not getting automatic updates, please do contact support because there might be something on the router side of things, not the laser side of things, keeping the update from going through. So Absolutely. Most of the time, it is a network issue. It's usually not a laser issue. And that's not to say that the lasers never have issues. We were not, uh, we're not infallible by any means. But most times with the updates, it's a connection issue uh, via your... Um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the router and its um, its firewall yeah. settings. Yeah, yeah. There's kind of routers and ports. That you oh, yeah, right. Uh, forwarded ports you have to open up sometimes. Um, but again, uh, we're not we're not IT no. guys. No, that's but different. That's different for every router. Absolutely. Well, we uh, don't know those routers. We don't. But luckily, our um, our support staff is well versed in these connection settings issues. Uh, if you're having any, uh, just get uh, get a hold of them and get that support ticket started. And uh, you you guys should be fine, uh, Tapia. Um, please let me know though uh, if you haven't got an update uh, later this week. Uh, we'll make sure we check up for you. So Katie Marstella La Rosa, she, what's she saying? Right She's there? saying, my husband and I just got our Muse yesterday and we are incredibly excited. We had to wait a bit to fully use it the way we'd like because our chiller hasn't come yet. Uh, we were told uh, it was back order, so hopefully soon. Absolutely, Katie, but what we did is we included in your Muse um, all the accessories that you needed to run your machine anyway. So you'll notice there's a water pump inside, and if you wanted to, you could just uh, grab a bucket of water, um, like we suggest getting a new Home Depot bucket, or Lowe's, depending on which, you know, which you we, we know what side you're on, you know. Uh, but you grab one of those buckets, you put that in there with some distilled water, and you can actually start using your laser today. I'm excited for him. I'm excited too. Uh, what you can do though is you can add a little bit of, um, like what we say, the frozen water bottles. Uh, yeah, yeah, to keep it cool. And uh, if they want to enter their first uh, project for the weekly contest, they can do that as well. How would you enter the weekly contest though, Walker? So you uh, post your picture with hashtag FSL Weekly. Contest. Oh, just like what's we got going yeah, down right yeah, here, right, like there. right down there. And right down speaking there. of, I think. Oh, we do have a weekly contest winner, don't we? We do. We do. 
Party baby. This is a pretty cool one. Uh, Team Henry Designs. Oh, we'll squeeze down a little bit. There we go. Uh, these guys have made a bunch of stuff with their laser. These are uh, uh, second and third place prizes for a glide competition. Now, if you go check out their page, they are obviously working with some pretty cool clients because they're doing skydiving, parachuting, gliding. Um, I don't Aviation know what the thing is awesome. when you have like the fan on your back oh. and you have a... Terrifying. That's what <laughs> it's it's very scary. Yeah, um, but either way, these guys work with a bunch of cool companies like that. So congratulations to Team Henry Designs. Uh, really, really good job. <laughs> Um, they've just won a free lens kit or $250 credit at the uh, FSL store. So make sure you're entering the weekly contest. Uh, all you have to do is post on social media using the hashtag FSL weekly contest and you're entered. It's that easy. Super easy. So Katie, do it because she's, she's so excited. Yeah, absolutely. So Katie, definitely enter, um, make your first project. We have, uh, where, where could they get some project files if they needed them? Uh, I think the free project page that we upload every week. Every single <laughs> week, that's right, we're making free projects. And this week we have a very cool project for scrapbooking, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we're going to do scrapbook uh, covers and then we're going to do dividers on the inside as well. So literally you'll be able to use these files to make uh, the cover for your scrapbook, different pages in your scrapbook, dividers for the scrapbook, using a bunch of different types of material. Uh, Walker's really got some cool stuff for you on Friday. Make sure you check in uh, then at 4 p.m. for the live cut. Don't forget that our other live uh, laser cuts are now on YouTube. So if you're looking for those live engravings and cuts that we've been doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays, those have been gone over to YouTube. Uh, we'll have a link down below to check out. Um, and then our link to our YouTube station is in our profile. Yeah, and if they want to see something specifically engraved, please let us know. We'll do some weird stuff. Absolutely. If you've ever wondered if something could be engraved, um, we won't do anything unsafe, but we'll try anything once if, uh, if it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Like and whatever we want. One more question. Looks like we got another question from Scott coming in from Facebook. Scott, what you got? We got Jim Robinson asking, when you fully integrate and upgrade to uh, RE3 for the Pro, will I be able to use my Mac? Yes, sir. Jim, absolutely. This is the biggest reason uh, why RE3 was being pushed for the pros, so that we have full Mac, PC, and Linux capabilities with the pro machines. Uh, and also, you wouldn't need a machine slave to the laser anymore, so you'll just be able to use your browser to access the web or uh, web-based uh, design platform just like you would with the Muse. Exactly the same. Yep. Just for pros. Yep. And the, uh, I'll tell you, the pros, they're looking pretty sweet with the, uh, the, pro, with the uh, RE3 and uh, touchscreen. Yes, the touchscreen is slick. Absolutely. You'll be seeing some uh, some great photos and videos of that coming out here real soon. Anything else coming in from the Book of Faces? That's all we got today. All right. Perfect. So, well, looks like that's all we have uh, for the show today. Make sure you're uh, clicking on the survey down below, giving us some helpful hints on how to be better <coughs> and maybe giving us a Bravo Zulu on how we did a good job. Uh, that link's always down below. Um, Laser 101 um, always has the free projects and files, but this Friday you're adding the scrapbook files, and then tomorrow we're doing what with the engraving? What are we doing? I forgot Divide. again. What's that? Section dividers, right? Yeah, section dividers. That's so right. So, so for part of the uh, project that we'll be doing Friday, we'll cut some of the uh, Romark uh, section dividers, and, and we're actually going to bash those out on the Pro Series machine and show you how you can do a bunch of cuts all at once. So a lot of yeah. people have asked about, you know, how do I maximize, uh, you know, my materials? How can I do the most, uh, you know, the most objects at one time on the Pro machines? Well, Walker's going to walk you through that whole step on how to batch out and maximize your material and the time you spend at your laser when you're doing a bunch of different jobs. And no producer, so it's going to be fun. Ooh, no Walker. So when the cat's away, the mice will play. Oh, it should be fun. So look for a bunch of inappropriate jokes and bad graphics tomorrow with a bunch of slow transitions and bad commentary from yours truly. Yes. Okay, so uh, <coughs> that's all we got for this week, but what are we doing next week for the show? We're doing uh, toys. Toys. Toys and lasers. That's yes. pretty cool. Some people would call a laser a toy. It's a big boy toy. It's a big We're boy toy. little kid toys. Yeah, so making little toys kids with, with your big head toys. Mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Uh, yeah, so next week we'll be in talking about toys and how you can uh, personalize toys and make different toys with your laser. Walker's actually got a really, really cool dinosaur he's going to make with the laser that's automated, right? It moves around? Well, yes, it's going to move. It's going to move. Gonna be, be it's, not like a, it's not like a robot. It's articulated. Here, not automated, yeah. I know uh, Jeff wanted me to do a moonwalker. I'll try to fit that in. So. A moonwalker? Yeah, yeah. I'm so like a moonwalker? Yeah, yeah. So is that like... 
walker with like a moon yeah, head? I'm just going to cop out and say I did it, yeah. Okay, so uh, until next week where we talk about, uh, you know, different things with the toys, uh, make sure you tune in on Friday at 4 o'clock for Walker and Scott doing uh, their live build. Actually, Scott won't be with us Friday. It'll be Walker probably just by himself doing a build because no okay. one likes to hang out with him. This has been grueling these last 30 yeah. minutes sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, tomorrow we got the live laser cut where we'll be doing those, um, the big, back, big batch work out on the Pro 48, so make sure you tune in that. And as always, check out laser101.fs, laser.com, for all your favorite tips, tricks, you know, what else we got? Uh, we, oh, we have to add, actually, uh, a few people asked last week the Muse sample file to be added really? to Laser 101. We have some people that wanted to make the, um, the uh, that little file they you designed. Compare it to our perfect file. Absolutely, and uh, we should probably put the preferred uh, settings up with that as well. So look for that added to the Laser 101 homepage uh, on fslaser.com here soon. Um, and until next week where we're talking about toys and stuff, uh, make sure you stay tuned for Walker and... Um, Keep making. Like those videos, please subscribe. We got more videos in the over here.